Welcome to the Working Money Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Wong. I'm your co-host, Willie Morales. Each week, we talk to people, either on the internet, through the phone, or in person. We try to get the best business minds on this podcast. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe on iTunes, and please enjoy the show. Today, we have a great guest. His name is Angelo Ramora from Ohio Cash Flows. Hi, Angelo. How are you? Hi, Michelle. I'm good. How about yourself? I am doing uh, good, despite the cold weather that we have in New York. How is it out there, Angelo? How is Ohio? It's it's the same here, guys. Bloody freezing. (laughs) (laughs) So, Angelo, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, look, I'm a real estate investor. Um, I moved to the U.S. almost five years ago um, to follow my real estate investment dream. And um, I moved here with only $15,000 in cash, and I had over $1.4 million in debt. Um, and I was just looking for cash flowing properties just because I couldn't find um, great returns in Australia. So that was one of the main reasons what prompted the move here to the U.S. Um, and it's, and it's similar to you know the New York market and I guess the market on the West Coast where property prices tend to be very expensive. There's not much cash flow, um, and as investors, you know you're always looking for a great return on investment. So moved here, bought one little property um, in a very rough area, um, renovated it and sold it for a profit, and that kind of started my my you know U- U.S. real estate venture. Um, you know, fast forward to to today. Um, I've got two multi-million dollar real estate investment companies. One of them is called Ohio Cashflow, where we work with investors from you know, all over the world, assisting, assisting them to find some great cash flowing properties. And another one that I just recently took over is um, List of Sell Realty, um, which, you know, in my opinion, is, is going to revolutionize the way real estate brokerages operate. So to date, I've done over 400 flips, um, equating to around $50 million worth of transactions. Um, and um, I guess the you know next step for me is to buy Ohio and rename it. <laughs> but I'm thinking like Angel Ohio or something like that. <laughs> what is the difference between like the Australian market and the U.S. market? Like, give us a little bit of uh, of uh, your perspective on that. Yeah, and great question, Michelle. And I do get that question asked quite a bit. And look, I mean, it's a different world, right? Um, there's, there's a, the terminology is different. You know, the way the rehabs are done are different. And then a, a big differentiality, which is the price point. I mean, the, the average median house price in Sydney right now, where I'm from, is $1.1 million. And you just can't make money in that market. There's no cash flow. The only way people are actually making money right now is by doing development projects, meaning you literally have to buy a lot of land and develop from the ground up. So, um, you know, just those few little things are very big differentiality. Um, in Australia, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of, for example, here in the U.S. there's a lot of micro markets, right? Especially here in Ohio, one street is good and then the next street is bad. And it's very close to each other. Well, in Australia, that doesn't exist. I mean, the bad neighborhoods are further away from downtown, right? And in Australia, we call it the CBD, which is the Central Business District. Well, here in the U.S., the better neighborhoods, meaning the suburbs, are further away from downtown. And when you go into downtown, that's where kind of all of the rougher parts stuff. So, I mean, I can go on and on and on about all the differentiality. Uh, but, you know, moving here, it took me around a year and a half to get accustomed to the U.S. way. Um, but like with anything, Michelle, it just comes down to hard work, right? It's not rocket science. Um, I, I speak to so many investors on a daily basis that, you know, they all talk the talk, they all walk the walk. And something that I've always been willing to do um, and, you know, I'm not the smartest guy out there, Michelle, and really, like, I've, I've got no formal education. Um, I quit school when I was 14. I can hardly type, read, and write. Uh, my, my math is awful, so thank God for the calculator. But there's one thing that I'm always willing to do, and that is work harder than anyone else. So, you know, even with those differentialities of the U.S. market and the Australian market, it just took around a year and a half to get accustomed to the, to, to the weight here. But, you know, I worked super, super hard, um, and, you know, here we are today. Um, Willie and I, you know, we come across a lot of investors too, and it's a little frustrating when we're trying to put a deal together or, or working on a project, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we want to work with you. We want to do this and this and this." And then when it comes down to crunch time, that actually, 
you know, to to go forward and do it, they're nowhere to be found. It's like crickets. Yeah, and that's the frustrating part, Angelo, where, you know, you have these people, like Michelle said, that when we first started together a couple of years ago, you know, they would tell Michelle, hey, we want to work with you guys. But like she said, when it came to crunch time, we didn't see nobody. So it's been frustrating on that part to try to do joint ventures. How is it with you if you do joint ventures or have you done any joint ventures with uh, any other investors? Yeah, and guys, you're bringing up a really good point. And I've got a little saying, and I always say it in this way, and it goes like this. If curiosity kills the cat, then procrastination kills an investor's dream. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> good a good bit point. Quote that I made up, and, and I've had the exact same problems that you guys have, and I'll tell you right now, there is one thing that I found out. Who is not willing to play, sorry, who is not willing to pay is not willing to play. So um, uh, uh, how I've structured my businesses is we ask for a down payment up front. And if someone is not willing to put that down payment up front, we will not talk to them. We will not, we will not give them our utmost and undivided attention. Because I have literally had thousands and thousands and thousands of phone calls with people talking the talk, saying they're going to do this, saying they're going to do that, but they never come through. They never take any action. And in my opinion, that is the biggest biggest um, uh, uh, mistake that anyone can make and, and Michelle touched on you know successful entrepreneurs not having expensive um, you know degree well I can tell you right now Michelle I've got you know a half a million dollar Harvard degree but that is in real estate mistakes <laughs> so that is my Harvard degree in real estate mistakes so you've got to take action guys you've got to learn on your mistakes um, and ultimately you, you can't procrastinate because the more you sit on the sidelines the world keeps moving forward Right, you know, real estate opportunities are constantly coming up. The mm-hmm. players are taking them by the, you know, taking the ball by the horns, and they're making a lot of money. Um, but really, just going back to answer your question, joint ventures. I don't do any joint ventures, mate. I don't want to do any joint ventures. I mean, I've got my own cash. I'll do deals by myself. Why? It's because when I start involving other people, Warren Buffett calls it the chain link of error. The more links you have to a chain, if one link is faulty, your chain is useless. So I like to keep my business exclusive. I only limit it to few people. Um, I've got my own capital. I've got hard money. I've got unsecured lines of credit. Um, I don't. I don't need anyone else's money. Um, uh, uh, why? And, and if I am going to take someone else's money, it has to be a passive investor. Meaning, you're going to give me the money. We're going to sign a contract, and you're going to let me do my thing. Because ultimately, I'm the expert. I live it. I breathe it. I love it. I work 100 hours a week. Um, and, 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 you know, uh, you have to let me do my job. So anyone out there that's looking at structuring a joint venture, the, the, the only way that you can succeed is, is there can't be two generals in the battle. There's always going to be one general and then someone's just going to be passive. So you're either going to give the money and shut up and let them do their job, <laughs> or you're going to receive the money and you're going to do all of the, you know, sweat equity, blood, sweat and tears, and the other person is going to shut up and let you do your job. You can't both... Both of you can't do the same thing because there's going to be tension and there'll be disagreements. And trust me, I've had those disagreements in the past and that is why I don't do joint ventures anymore. Listen, I love your philosophy. And, you know, um, well... Yeah, I, we do. Um, I, have to, I, I have to agree with you on that. Um, you, you, you hit a, a few things that I... That I'm, I'm looking back and I'm, and I'm hearing it and, you know... The thing with us is that uh, with the capital, we're still, you know, there are certain things that we're uh, doing now and we're doing it ourselves. Um, in regards to doing joint ventures, we're, we're still uh, good with doing joint ventures, but now we're a little bit more cautious of who we uh, do joint ventures with, only because of our experiences, our mistakes. And, you know, I, I guess you don't, you can't tell what's going to happen in the future. You can just, you know, live uh, moment to moment. So we've learned from the, our mistakes. So now we know who we can go to and who we can uh, work with. So in that, we, we agree with you. Um, going completely solo, I think that that might be probably what, the next in the next year or so? You know, a- Angelo, you hit it right on the head because I've, I've, and I told Michelle this recently that I kind of soured on on uh, partnerships because I've partnered with a couple of people that turned out to be 
like shit and you know i ended up losing a couple of uh, thousand bucks here and there which is fine you know i make mistakes and all that but uh, you know uh, on another point you had said in one of your articles uh to be taken seriously you should invest your own money uh why is that um do you think it's harder for a newbie to get uh someone let's say like you or someone experienced like you to to help them fund their first deal um, yeah, mate, look, great question, and uh, I'm, you know, we were talking about mistakes there. I'm a big believer in, in making mistakes with your own money and losing your own money, because look, I've gone down the path of doing joint ventures and borrowing someone else's money when I didn't know what I was doing, really, and there is nothing worse than losing someone else's money as a rookie. You feel like a loser. You feel like an idiot. You cannot look that person back in the eye. Now, yes, I've paid back all of my debts. I mean, look, it's business. That is real estate. You, you, you're never going to win. You sometimes lose. As long as you pay back the money you've lost. So my advice has always been to everyone, is work hard. I mean, Michelle, really, people are lazy. Why do they look for other people's money? Because they don't want to work hard themselves and save enough to start their real estate endeavors by themselves. They're lazy. That is the first thing you need to get out of your mentality. You need to work your ass off and you need to work harder than anyone else. Once you do that, save 50, 100, 150, 200 grand, whatever you can save, go out into the market, do deals by yourself, make mistakes, learn on your mistakes, but as you're doing these deals, you are also recording everything you're doing, right? So you're going to have a proven track record. And then if you do want to raise money later on when you do know what you're doing, you can use all of the previous experiences that you've gained on your own skin and you can go out into the market, you can easily find partners, you can easily find hard money. I mean, guys, I've got people throwing millions and millions of dollars at me right now. Like, literally, I can take so much money, it is ridiculous. Do you know why? <laughs> because they've seen me do 400 deals over the last five years. They've seen me grow as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, and now they're begging me to use their money because they know I'm going to be good at my work, they're not going to make more money with it, and they'll get a good return. So look, it's just, look, there's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. Um, I never say that my way is right or wrong. I just like to share my, my, my experiences, opinions, and perceptions with everyone in my very practical way. But that's how I would go about it. I think there are too many lazy investors out there wanting other people's money instead of just working their ass off, saving their own, and then going out into the market, proving themselves, and then using that proof to go out and raise more money if they really want to scale things to a whole other level. No, and we totally agree. I mean, um, Willie is, is uh, working in the Philadelphia market, and uh, you know we're we're partnered together, obviously under the the company. But um, you know he extensively is always looking for deals in Philadelphia, and he's doing it solely by himself. He had you know after um, the experience that we've had in the past year or so, you know he's like you know what, let me just do things myself and just concentrate and that's what he's been doing he's been doing the the, the marketing connecting with people connecting with with owners trying to uh give different options to the owner you know you right basically angela what i try to do is um see if i could try to get owner financing um uh -huh. And I think that works for me than try to do wholesaling. Maybe I'll do wholesaling down the road or whatever. But if I could, like you said, establish some uh, credibility, even if it's not for other investors, but just for myself that, hey, I, I have a, tr a proven track record. Show the owners, hey, I've done A, B and C. I pay my bills on time. Here's my credit report. H whatever you need. I'll show you. And I like uh, I like your model, uh, Angela, where you do it by yourself and you develop business credit and all that. So that's what I'm trying to develop right now, some business credit. Because my credit score is, 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 is still good. It's in the 700s. But I agree with you, Angelo. I, I would hate for me personally to act for anybody for money when I haven't really done that many deals. We just done one where you've done a few hundred. You know, you have that credibility and that education under you. You know what I'm saying? So that that's important for me to establish some type of um, uh, track record. Uh, hey, look, and just keep just keep plugging away there, really. And look, I'll tell you right now, mate. When you become known as someone that is the real deal, and you just keep plugging away at those owner finance deals, and you keep proving yourself. 
Like, I'll give you an example. We have bought so many homes here in Ohio that my inbox gets flooded with deals every single day. Why? Because people know you're a buyer. They know you've got the cash to make it happen. I call it the CIA of real estate. You've got to have the cash. If you don't have the cash, you've got to have the influence to influence someone else to pony up the money. And if you don't have the influence, then you've got to have the authority to pull the trigger on someone else's behalf if you don't have the money. So the CIA, the cash, influence, and authority. And ultimately, mate, when people find out that you are a CIA, they will want to do business with you. They will want to send you deals. And, and I'm sure that whatever it is that you're looking at doing with the other finance side of things, mate, people will be all over it. And, and you're exactly right. And mate, what's the best indication of the future? Right? We can't predict the future. It's impossible. No one has a crystal ball. No one is most of damage. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes. How the hell can we know what's going to happen in the next 10 years? But I can tell you right now, mate, the best indication of the future is the past. Okay? So that will come down to you proving yourself, your proven track record, where you've been and what it's about, and you need to showcase that. That's why I'm very loud and proud with all of my videos. And Ruth. And Ruth. <laughs> and Ruth. But, um, you know, you know, you've got to report it. You've got to take photos. You've got to tell people who you are. You've got to tell them what you're doing. You know, speak with confidence. I mean, people love confident people. Uh, so you've got to be confident. No, and I, I listen. We completely agree. Um, I think more than anything, and and this is what I've seen so far. The ones that are, I would say, the lazy ones, the ones that you were referring to, the ones that are just the wannabes. Those people, they don't want to move unless someone else is moving. And what I mean by that is that, and and we talk about it all the time. You have to be like the trailblazer. Uh, you're the one. You you have to be the one that's motivated enough to go forward and 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 just do what you have to do and put yourself out there to make a name for yourself. And then once you do that, and and you're the you know you're the initiator. You're the the one that's doing it. Other people will follow you. And it seems like you know the uh, from what I've seen, it's like who's gonna blink first. You know, when when we've w been working with other people, it's like they're too scared to do something. So it's like for me, you know, and excuse my language, I, I you know, and Willie can vouch for it. I would say, you know, fuck it. I'll just do it myself and just do what needs to be done. And usually when that happens is when everybody else starts to follow, you know, follow your lead because you're too afraid to do it. And, you know, so I, I agree with what you're saying in regards to just doing things um, yourself and basically setting setting the example uh, for other people so that they can see that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it too. There is no excuse. You're dropping the head bomb on me. What's going on there, Michelle? <laughs> can I stop doing that, too, please? Listen, <laughs> listen. With this is an this is an open conversation. You can be you can say whatever is on your mind. We're very open. We're very laid back. So feel free to say whatever. You can say shit. You can say you know and other stuff. So it's fine. Love it. Angelo. You got me all excited. <laughs> <laughs> and Angelo, how did you? Yeah, go, I'm sorry. No, no, go, go, go. Yeah, this is probably the first podcast I've ever done where I'm allowed to drop the F bomb. <laughs> 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 I always used to say, instead of fucking, I would have to say freaking. And it's like, come on, seriously, just, just let me do it. Just let me do it. But um, yeah, guys, and just, just touching on, on what you said there. And look, this is, everyone listening, here's an exercise for them. And I'm not sure if they, if they can do this. And this takes years and years and years to be able to do Right? People are, people, why don't people take action because they're scared? They're scared to lose money. Now, when you fall to the absolute lowest point of your life, and I've been there, um, uh, 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 money doesn't really mean shit. And, and why I say that is because, look, look at it this way. Let's just say, I want everyone to picture themselves at the absolute lowest point of their life. And I'm talking about, um, let's say they've got, they've got tremendous financial loss, there is so much debt, They've got businesses that are going bankrupt. Their credit score is shit. Um, put, it feels like the whole freaking world is caving in on you. And I've been there. And then you have to ask yourself the question. So you put yourself in the darkest position possible. It can't get any lower. It can't get any worse. Now ask yourself this question. Do, ask yourself this question. Do I have two arms? Do I have two legs? Can I breathe? Can I walk? Can I talk? Can I eat? 
the answer is yes to all of that, well, then you've lost absolutely nothing. You've got nothing to lose, guys. I mean, think about it. What is the number one thing on someone's mind that is sitting in a hospital right now with terminal cancer? They didn't give a shit about money. They just want to get out of that hospital to see daylight again. They don't care about money. So if you can, if you can accept that in your mind that it's just a piece of paper, that it should not dictate you know, your emotions, then you've really got nothing to lose. Guys, right now, as of today, I've got multi-million dollar real estate investment company. I've got properties in the Bahamas. I'm buying something in Japan. I'm going to look at something in Croatia. And, and I, you know what? I could lose it all tomorrow. I really don't give a shit. You know why? Because I know that I could kick start again and do it better second time around. So, you know, the, the fear side of things really is nothing. When you put yourself in that perspective of, am I healthy? Can I walk? Can I talk? Do I have two arms, two legs? Can I, can I breathe? Right? Am I alive? If you are, then the money side of things, just get it. I know it's hard, right? I'm, I'm talking, but I'm being very philosophical here. But I managed to master myself by practicing what I'm, what I'm preaching right now. Right? And they say that once you can conquer yourself and conquer your own emotions, there is no one or no thing in this world that you can't conquer. So anyone listening, I encourage them to try that. And, and it, it might work for them. Um, ultimately, you know, they should just continue living their shitty little life and never achieving anything significant with it. I mean, and let me finish with this, guys. There's a study. The number one thing that folks in retirement homes regretted when looking back on their life is not spending more time with family, not going on a holiday more often. It was taking more risks. They said, why didn't I take more risks? I wish I took more risks in my younger days. So that is the biggest regret. So don't be, don't, don't look, live your life without regret. That's my message. Uh, Angelo, I want to clap. Because, you know, it... Drop the mic, man. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because you're right. Like sometimes I get down on myself and then I'm like, wait a minute, you know what? I'm alive. You know, I could do this. And, you know, hearing you speak, you know, is, is the truth. Me and Michelle talk about this. You know, it's a, a mindset and we have a good positive mindset. But at times, though, Angela, we sometimes I'm not saying doubt ourselves, but we get down in the crap and say, man, what the hell is going on here? But it's just keep on going and not giving up. You I think it's you have to ask you, you have to remind yourself your why. Um more than anything i have my moment you know and people think oh i'm always being positive 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 yeah i'm always positive because you know i know that there's something at at the other end and i don't let other people bring me down but when i do have my moments that are things are not going accordingly they're just you know just going to to the shit hole um i remind myself the reason why i'm doing it and once i have i you know, remind myself what what my why is, and 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 refocus and recharge my my energy into that. Then, every, the, you know, I'm unstoppable, and you know, and I have that determination that and that drive, and those are the factors of, you know, for for people that truly truly want to do something, you have to have that passion, you have to have that heart, you have to have that mindset, and you always have to remind yourself why you're doing it. And for whatever the reason that why is, always focus on that why. And some people tend to forget that, you know. Um, and you know, and what you just said now in regards to being thankful that you're that you know that you're alive and that you know that you're okay. That you know that is also true. But I've seen some people that you know, that they might have some kind of disability or they might have some kind of, you know, maybe they don't have, uh, you know, two limbs or something like that, but they have this drive and they do these phenomenal things. And then I'm looking and I said, well, wait a minute, these people are doing things and they're showing that they can still do things more extraordinary than, than you know, than the average person. And here you have another average person that doesn't even, they don't even realize what they have in front of them and they don't even you know utilize that and try to go forward so you can also you know for me i can see it that that way as well where there are some people that might be limited in certain things but they show listen i might be limited on this but i can exceed on that and those are the examples of 
you know, as well, why I, I also keep doing what I do. Also, Michelle, I love it. I love it, guys. A- Angelo, question. Now, you know, it's funny because let's, uh, about taking chances and, and a risk. Someone like you that came from Australia, you came to Ohio, you kicking butt, and, you know, so you took the chance. You know, you came from another country, and that's amazing because I always see that people from other p- parts of the world come here and do great. But what is it, in your opinion, Angelo, and the people you've been around with, that people here in the United States they don't take that risk. Is it fear? Is it, they don't think they can do it. They don't have the education. They don't have, uh, you know, they're in the wrong environment. What do you think, you know, what do you, why is it that some of the people here just don't do anything? They just rather just take, do the nine to five, take orders and work till they're 85 because there's nothing else to do. I, I, I just don't believe that. I believe there's, there's chances out there for all of us. Yes, I, I love it, mate. I love it. I'll tell you why. Because they're too fucking entitled. That's why, mate. They live in the best country in the world. That gives them everything they could possibly want to need. I grew up in Croatia. Right? My parents are Croatian. I've seen poverty, mate. I've seen my friends calling their sister to ask if they can go and buy a cheeseburger because the sister was the only employed person in the family. Right? Let's think about that. They have to call their sister because she's the only one, she's the breadwinner in the family, and ask her if they can go and buy a fucking, you know, dollar cheeseburger. That's poverty. It's a luxury eating McDonald's in a country like Croatia. Right? So what I've found, mate, is, is a lot of people here, um, you know, once again, they live in the best country in the world. Um, a lot of them are entitled. They do, they do not understand how hard it is for others in other countries. And that's why immigrants have moved here Right, and then literally built the United States of America. Mm. Right, exactly. Uh, Amen that, to from, that. From the, from the Italians to, to you know the Irish and, and to the to, to the Scots and the Brits. I mean, in, in Boston, right, mm-hmm. New York. Um, so uh, that would be one of the main things, mate. Is I think that a lot of folks here are entitled. Um, another thing would be um, I think that society has brainwashed them with a thing called the American dream. Mm-hmm. What is the American dream, guys? This is what the American dream is: go to college. Get a degree, get out of college, find a job, get married, get a better job, get into debt, have kids, up five, have another kid, kids need to go to college, downside, pay for kids' college, and then hopefully you've got enough money when you're 65 so you can go live in Florida and you know play tennis and, and golf with Christina Coladas. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Right. The society brainwashes you to work for 40 years to constantly feel like someone's forcing you to get out of bed with an axe because you've got all of this fucking debt left, right, and center. Well, and, and, that's a, and that's another thing that people people are brainwashed with, with what society tells them to do. Guess what, guys? I don't give a shit about the American dream. Now, don't get me wrong. It's the best country in the world. This is the third time I'm saying it right now, and, and I, would, I could never do what I've done here anywhere else. Right. right? But I want to live my dream. So what is my dream, guys? This is my dream. I own waterfront real estate in the Bahamas. I rent a shitty little two-bedroom apartment in Salida. I drive a Porsche right now. I'm just negotiating on a Ferrari. I'm buying them cash. How do we fucking loan? Now I own my real estate in the Bahamas, which is owned outright. It's cash. But I live in a, in a I rent a little two-bedroom condo. I don't give a shit about having a 3,000-square-foot mansion here with $750,000 in debt. That is not what I want, right? But that is unfortunately what society enforces amongst all of the people here in the U.S. So anyone listening, I mean, whatever your dream is, follow your dream. Don't succumb to what society tells you to do. Do what you want to do. And if that means owning real estate in the Bahamas, as crazy as that sounds, and driving a sexy car before you turn 30, or if that's what you really wanted, then do that. Don't go to college if you don't want to go to college. Don't work a 9 to 5 if you don't want to work a 9 to 5. Now, yes, you're going to have to work your ass off in other ways, like I do. But ultimately, it just comes down to what you want and, and, and working your ass off to get there, right? So um, you can drop the mic now again, Lily. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, I love it. I, I love it. I love the fact that you're 100% real in, in what you say. And, you know, and I agree. Um, a, a lot of it, and, and we've discussed this in a, a, a previous uh, a, a previous show that we did a while ago, where 
you know, here in the U- in the U.S., people are talking about, oh, you know, the 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 immigration and and this and that and and then some. The immigrants are the ones that built he, the the U.S. Let's be honest. There's a lot of people that come in from other countries, and you're absolutely 100 percent right. They're coming here to try to better themselves. They come here with a lot of drive and determination because they want to do better for their family, and they they and they succeed they go they might not know so much maybe about how running a business or so or or anything like that but they hustle and 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 they put in you know so many hours so just so that they would be able to own their own business or they become entrepreneurs or you know things of that of of that sort and they're they're everywhere and i have to give it to them they're they're the risk takers you know, and then you have the people that are born here in this country and they don't take the advantage of what they, they have, the opportunity that they have, you know. Um, and yes, you're absolutely right about society. Society has us confined where they think that we have to. I, I think that they, the, the <clears throat> fact that they program us to be secure and the security is just to be inside that box, not go outside of the box and see and explore what what is out there. And what's out there is limitless. You can do whatever you want. You know, okay, you might not you might not succeed in one thing, but you have the option of doing something else. Don't back yourself up in a corner. You know, it, just explore what you you know what is out there and what you can do. And once you know what you can do, you can exceed. You can do anything that you want, and nobody can tell you otherwise. And that's the beauty of, of being able to live life. Nothing is written in stone. You know, it, it's just a matter of doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, and that's it. And, you know, I, I totally agree with you. And Angelo, uh, a question. How... Um Getting back to the real estate side, how did you d- decide that you wanted to do turnkey? Is that more for yourself or more for your clients? How did you get into that field of turnkey? Yeah, well, really, how that, how that went about is, you know, when I first started buying U.S. properties, um, I was buying them from Australia. Um, I bought, you know, a few properties up in say, New York, site unseen to a turnkey provider. And I just completely lost my arm. Um, so that was the only thing that I knew at the time about U.S. real estate. And, and I knew that if I wanted to make it work, I had to come here. Um, and and another, another reason why it prompted me to, you know, leave everyone and everything behind, pack up my bags and move to the U.S. Um, and then, you know, the, the concept of a higher cash flow started. Um, and, and I saw all of the shit going on in the country with how many shady turnkey operators are out there mm-hmm. screwing, you know, foreign investors. And to me, and in my eyes, it was so to take that stigma out of turnkey real estate. And, and what it consisted of was just doing the right thing. In an industry guy with so much shit, all I had to do really is come here, start my own business, offer great returns with in-house property management in decent B-class areas and not screw investors. And that's what I've done. And right now, like literally last month in January, we had like 100 investor applications come through. We've never had that many before. Wow. I don't spend a single dime on marketing or advertising. Like, it's ridiculous what we've created. We've created so much hype and buzz around who we are and what we're doing. We don't spend a single dime on marketing and advertising. It's all just, you know, word of mouth referrals and my videos and blogs that I, that I put a lot of equity, sweat equity into. Uh, but, mate, ultimately, if you do the right thing by people, when shit hits the fan and money is lost, if you fault, put your hand in your pocket and cover the fucking lost money because it's your fault. Don't screw people. Don't be shady. And, and, and that's how we have grown so much. And, and that's how, kind of, you know, how I wanted to go about starting my journey here in the U.S. in turn D. Because um, it's the only thing that I knew. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a saying out there, change does not necessarily mean good. Um, so if, if you know something, stick to it. Master it. Perfect it. Once you can, leave out of that thing that you know and go into another business or another type of um, a, a way to make money in real estate um, without losing the first one, then you can comfortably comfortably leave that first um, business just like I have right now, right? I'm not focusing on a higher cash flow this year. I'm focusing on my brokerage, which is so healthy because I've got 10 full-time staff that are looking after a higher cash flow. But it took me four years to master it and perfect it, right? Before I can change, change 
change and, and jump on board for another business. Um, but yeah, mate. <laughs> Oh. All right, sounds good. No, you know what? It, it's it's uh, uh, I think a good business model if done right, and especially you got to run your listen in any business. You know this, Angelo. You got to do your due diligence and run the numbers, and then you know if you got a good investment or or, or not. Yes, I mean, agreement. Um, agreement. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I always tell folks, this is my philosophy. You have to focus on the people first, right? There's so many investors that I speak to on a daily basis, mate. They, they, all, they all think they're experts, really. I mean, you know, they all go online and they look at the stats and demographics, you know, on, online, on Zillow and Trulia and Realty, whatever track and all that bullshit. And I'm like, dude, you, you can't be a bigger expert than I can. I live it. I breathe it. I'm here on the ground, counting the contract every single day. I've got 10 full-time staff who work around the clock. We know the market better than anyone else. We can feel the market breathe. We breathe with the market because we're here. So I'm always telling everyone, forget about what you see online. You have to focus on finding the right people that are always going to have your best interests at heart. Once you find the right people, conduct due diligence on those people because you're not going to really, you're not going to lose money because because the market is going to tank. At least not in my opinion. Well, because the numbers in a deal don't make sense. I think we're all smart enough to figure out a good deal for a bad one. Do you know why we lose money? Because we work with the wrong people. It's the people that will end up costing you the money, not the deal itself. So there's a saying, it's like this business is easy, people make it difficult. So switch that, switch your mindset, focus on the people first, finding the right people, and then start doing due diligence on the numbers to see if that particular deal market and area suits your investment goal and where you want to be, right? Here's another saying for you. If you buy the best house in the best street, in the best area, with the best capital growth projection, but your property manager or contractor are a cheat or incompetent, you're going to lose money because they're going to steal or lose your rent or they're going to screw you on a bid, right? So it doesn't matter how sexy everything else is if you've got the wrong people it's just not going to do well. So, so, Angelo, okay, I definitely agree on that. So, in your expertise, how do you find the right people? Is it like dating? You have to talk to someone for a long period of time? Do you have to look online to search, you know, Google someone and say, hmm, okay, this guy has no complaints? Or do you talk to, to their friends? Do you look on Facebook? What would be the appropriate way to, to know that you're working with someone that has the same values as you? Do we act yeah. straight up and say, listen, this is what I want to do. Are you on board? Yes or no? Um, what would be the process? Great question. Right, look, I want everyone to listen to this right now. Real estate is not a one-night stand. Okay, real estate is a marriage. So stop fucking jumping in bed with people. And I see it happen all the time. That's why there's so many horror stories out there because people are just jumping in bed. They think it's a one-night stand. It doesn't work like that. I mean, in order to achieve success in real estate, it takes 5, 10, 15, or even 20 years to really, really get to where you need to be. All good things take time. So you have to make sure that you are constantly siphoning through people and weeding out everyone that is not genuine. You know how I told you guys about the chain link of error, Warren Buffett. The more links you have to a chain, if one is faulty, then your chain is useless. So you have to keep looking until you find the right people. Right? And I'm going to be derogatory here to the human race, but it takes a ton of shit before you get to the pot of gold. Right? And, and, and one thing that I like to use as my question, which I actually, put when I do speaking engagements nationwide, I mentioned this, it's a, it's a magical question, and that is, are you willing to wait six, nine, or 12 months of building a trust and relationship with me before we do any business together? Are you willing to wait six, nine, or 12 months of building trust and relationships with me before we do any business together. That question in itself will eliminate 99.9% of the shady operators. You know, no one is interested in about delayed gratification. No one wants to wait. Everyone wants to do business right now. But guys, it just doesn't work like that. If you really want to find that dream team of people that you are going to have huge success over the coming years, you have to be, all of you have to be focused on delayed gratification. You know, Angelo, I, I heard that, I think you said that on Bigger Pockets um, 
I don't know if it was a year or two ago. I think that it was on Bigger Pockets where I heard one of your interviews, or you might have been here in New York when you said that. So you think, or not you think, but you know that if you wait six to nine months, you'll know if you have if that person has the same goals as you. That's what you're saying, or did I get no, that I'm wrong? Just, you know, you don't have to wait that long. We were just asked that question. See what they say. If they're not willing to do that, then they're not right. Gotcha. They're not right for you. In my opinion, like look at it this way, mate. I've got ten full time staff right now. Every single one of my people is sold on the bigger picture and vision. I don't talk to them about today, I talk to them about the next five to ten years. Where we're all going to be. And do you believe in the bigger picture and vision? You you know how much my staff gets paid? Nothing. You know how much I get paid? Nothing. We're not working for now. We're working for what will be. And if they truly believe in that bigger picture and vision of a higher cash flow and me as the leader of the company, right? Then they will be willing to wait until we get there. Because my promise to them is when we get there, you will make more money than you would ever make anywhere else. And this company is going to support you for the rest of your life. Because you are not a commodity to this company. You are everything to this company, right? So that is what I sell my people on and that is what they buy into, right? So in order to get to where you need to be, you need to have people in that type of mindset. It's got to be a marriage. You have to be willing to stick through the hard times and the good times, and it's going to take years and years and years, mate. That is, that is, that is just the way I see it. Um, that is my opinion. It's something that I've always been telling everyone, um, that you, know, you, you have to make sure that you are working with the right people. And there's four principles that I look for, guys. Which, which, are, which are the four core beliefs that I present as an individual, and that is loyalty, honesty, no greed, and respect. Those are the four core beliefs that I present, and those are the four core beliefs that I want everyone else to, be, to, to present um, in, 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 that I'm looking at doing business with. Now, um, have I lost money in the past to sell relationships? Yes. Have I fired someone five days ago? Yes. I mean, that's life, that's business. But ultimately, if you can surround yourself with just three good people that you can, you can, you know, get into that marriage and know that you're going to stay together for the coming years, you will do wonders. Because there is, I mean, with more people on board, you just can't do it all yourself. You need to have a good group of people around you. No, and I, you know, and Willie and I just looking at each other right now, and we're like in a in. We're in amazement of what you're saying, but yeah. we also but we also agree with you. Um, we say this all the time to other people that we've spoken to because sometimes they they ask us about uh, our perspective, and the, and for us, we want to have a good business relationship or business relationship, but also a relationship that goes beyond that, that can last for years to come, and. Sometimes, and, and especially nowadays, everybody's so quick to just do a quick deal or they want to just make that, you know, that big deal where it's a million dollars or two million dollars or, or whatever, but they don't see the bigger picture where, yeah, you can do that one deal, but it's not going to be it, it, an existing thing consistently. And for us, it's more important to build that relationship with those people that we know that we will have that relationship going for 20, 30 years from now, trust that person, you know, with our eyes closed and still have ongoing business with them, you know, and, and, and referral, having referrals from, from them and vice versa, I think is more important than just having that one major deal. Um, you know, other people might see it differently. Um, but for us, you know, it's just building that foundation. And once you have that foundation, nothing can stop you from doing multiple deals after that. Michelle, I love what you're saying there, and I 100% agree with that. And that is, that is exactly the way it should be done. Uh, because, look, a lot of people, once again, they want to do that one night thing, they want to jump into bed, they think they're going to be rich overnight. It doesn't happen like that, guys. No. It doesn't. I'm telling you, I've, I've done 400 deals and I'm still not rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes years to get to where you need to be. There's no magic pill. It's hard work. It takes hard work. It takes years of hard work to get to where you need to be. So it, you forget about jumping in bed. Forget about you know doing that one deal and being a success overnight. I love what Ray Kroc said, the founder of McDonald's. He said, 
philosophy I and we are you know on the same wavelength and I love the fact that you're an expert and you're telling our listeners that hey you have to roll up your sleeves you have to put in your time effort and energy into something and that it's not going to be overnight that you're going to be successful it's going to take some time and Willie and I are always constantly talking to to you know our listeners and other people and we we you know, we feel the same way. For for your real estate leads, now do you do direct mail or do you have uh, an agent work with you giving you off-market deals? How do you get your leads for your properties? Uh, like, any means necessary, right? And, and I always tell folks, when you're looking for deals, I mean, you can't leave any stone unturned. So we've got various strategies that we utilize. Um, we do a lot of yellow letter campaigns, but that's direct mail. Um, we scour Craigslist daily. Um, we, we submit a lot of offers on the MLS. We work with bird dogs and wholesalers. Um, you know, me having a real estate brokerage also helps with my realtors sending us the deals that we need for our criteria, that meet our criteria. And you know, what I touched on earlier really is, is once you start to be, become known as a player in the market, then you know, everyone and anyone starts sending deals your way because they know you're a buyer. Right. You're that CIA, as I mentioned before, then you're going to perform. Um, one thing that I am looking at developing right now, because I'm, I'm getting into tech, I'm, I'm heavily getting into the world of tech. Um, I've given equity in, in my brokerage to a few tech entrepreneurs that don't know much about real estate, but they're, they're you know, in their early 30s and they've sold out of five companies for eight figures. I mean, that's how, that's how extremely, amazingly people are. There's at least a fellow like me that can't even type. <laughs> right? So um, we've got a website which is called sellyourhousetoledo.com. So I'm looking at developing that and optimizing it to see how many leads we can generate through that website. Uh, maybe paying, you know, putting a little bit of money behind that to see how that's going to work for us. Uh, but ultimately, mate, you know, we, we do well with all of our deals. Um, the, the best way, in my opinion, where folks can get the best ROI and, and really get some amazing deals would be direct back. Yellow letter campaign. I mean, you just can't beat it. I know it's expensive. I know it takes time, I know you've got to do the callbacks, I know you've got to have thick skin, but ultimately, I mean, when you're buying property for 10 to 20 cents on the dollar, like I am here in Toledo, when the right deal comes up, I mean, it's, 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 it's an absolute freaking gold mine. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay, so Angela, I have a quick question for you. Um, this is a question that I, I ask all our guests. Um, from your experience, um, doing real estate and in, in investments. What do you recall has been a, a pitfall for you and what you recall has been a highlight for you? Oh, you got me on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> you? No way. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've already got it. I've already got it. Don't worry. I've got it. Um, <laughs> I guess, look, the, the biggest pitfall is um, not being patient enough. And I would, you know, when I say something like, I always share my perceptions, opinions, and experiences, right? Um, and, and that is how I've, you know, I've come up with a lot of the content that I can deliver to, to the listeners. And, um, you know, when I talk about the one night stand compared to a marriage, that is probably the biggest mistake that I made in my journey as a real estate investor. I would, I would like to do deals with people, like, just on, on just one meeting or one phone call. And I lost a lot of money. I got screwed. I got burnt. Um, so not being patient enough was just a big problem. Was a big problem for me back in the day, um, and I didn't do due diligence of the people, um, and I just wanted to do deals for the purpose of doing deals. I wanted to brag that I'm this awesome real estate investor, but that is not the reason why. 
why we invest in real estate. We don't invest in real estate for the title associated with investing. I'm an entrepreneur or I'm a real estate investor, right? We invest in real estate because of what it can offer us and what it can do for our family. That's why we invest in real estate. So, you know, definitely not being patient was the biggest mistake um, that I ever made and not doing due diligence on the people that I was working with. Um, the biggest the biggest uh, 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 pro, um, uh, I guess, you know, what changed my life, and I'm not sure if Willie remembers me talking about this in my speaking presentation in New York, but it was when I found my purpose in life. Um, and I know Michelle touched on it earlier, but when you find your purpose in life, in life I mean, you're unstoppable. There is nothing that can get in your way. There is no one that can get in your way. There is no emotion that can slow you down. I mean, I'm, I'm Superman, guys. I don't feel any fear, I don't feel any pain, I don't feel any hunger. I mean, every single day, all I feel is the sheer passion, drive, and determination to succeed in any other case. I mean, I am unstoppable. And the reason for that is, I do what I do not for my own personal benefit. Believe it or not, I don't do it for my own personal benefit. And I don't do it for money. Believe it or not, again, I really don't. I do it for something bigger and better than that. And, and what it is right now is my loved one. I'm doing it for my family. I want right. to offer them the life that they never had. Then for my staff, I love my employees. They mean the world to me. They work really, really hard. I want them to succeed. I want all of my businesses to be able to support them and their loved ones forever. Once I get that done, then I'm doing it for the world. I want to fucking save the world. I mean, you know, I, I, one day when everything is said and done and I leave this planet, I want my legacy to live on. Not as clock hours, right, plastered on a building, but as the Remora Institute for Cancer Research, something that will continue helping people long after I'm gone. And that is my purpose, and that is my life, as poorly as it sounds. That is what is true to me, that is what is in my heart. Um, and, and um, you know, that finding my purpose and why was the, was the um, highlight of, of my life, I guess. And um, it, it is what enabled me to be as successful as I am today. Well, you know what, um, Angelo, that wasn't corny, and um, definitely I, not. No, it, it and I understand your why. I I do it as well for um, my family. Um, I do it for my for myself and for my future family. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, and six and success is different for for various people. I agree. It for me is not so much the money. It's more. I guess it's the recognition to be able to say that you did something, you strived in something, and that you're finally getting recognition from that from other people more than, you know, than the money. I mean, the money can always come in afterwards, but yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Angelo, I have one more question um, before, uh, before we go. How, how did you get your education in real estate? Uh, did you go to school, read books, uh, uh, have mentors? How did you get your education in the business? Hey, great question, really. Um, look, a little bit of everything. Ultimately, mate, you, know, you, you have to make a passion and a profession. You have to be obsessed with what it is that you're looking at doing. I mean, you have to love it, breathe it, eat it, you know, dream about it. And, True. And that is what, uh, you know, I was a professional soccer player when I was 18 years old. Um, and certain things didn't work out there, and I decided to hang up the boots. And then, you know, the extreme passion that I had for stock up, I replaced that with business and real estate. And I just completely immersed myself in everything and anything business and real estate. Um, I had mentors, I still do. Um, I used to read books, now I don't have the time to. Um, but, um, you know, bigger pockets of the online forum, the network equals your network. Um, you know, you, you meet a lot of people, speak to a lot of people, take them out for coffee. I spend, I spend tens of thousands of dollars a year on dinners and coffees and flights. I will literally fly in to meet someone. Well, I am. I'm actually flying into New York next week to meet someone for two hours and I'm flying back. Right? So it's, it's stuff like that where, you know, if, if you want to get to where you need to be, you need to be willing to do whatever it takes and you need to become obsessed with it. Every waking moment of your day, you need to, you need to obsess about, you know, real estate. Um, and, and that would be my message to everyone, mate. But, um, you know, you forget the books are powerful. Um, the online forums are powerful. Um, the magazines are powerful. The, the, you know, speaking to people is powerful. Um, going to events, speaking to seminars is powerful. Listening to your podcast is powerful. Um, but there's one thing 
because there's one thing that's going to be more powerful than anything else, and that is doing it, actually doing it, right? Because you will never, ever learn as much as you will when you actually do it yourself. Got right? it. Awesome. Now, um, Angelo, before we wrap up, um, where can our listeners find you? In Toledo. <laughs> well, besides Toledo, Angelo, how about website or something? <laughs> Toledo. My doors are open, everyone. Toledo. <laughs> um, no, guys, look, it's, it's pretty easy. Google Angelo Sanchez. Um, you'll find me there. Sounds good. Uh, okay, sounds good. Willie, where can they find us? Well, they could find us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash work your money. You could find us on workyourmoney.net. And also you could find us on patreon.com where you could give us a little donation to keep the show going. If you like the show, especially with people like Angelo, why wouldn't you like the show? Okay. And there you go. Okay, guys. Uh, this is the Work Your Money podcast. And uh, this is... A great pleasure to have Angelo. Angelo yes, definitely. You are the man. And uh, for all our listeners out there, until the next time, have a good evening, everyone. Angelo, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. All right, take care, buddy. Bye bye. <laughs>